Good morning. It's Thursday, the 20th of October. You're very welcome to Ireland AM. How are we all after the thunder and lightning last night where we were? It was something else. It wasn't mental. all over the country. Did you have it? Yeah, a bit of lightning last night, Jeff, yeah, but the rain. The rain, it's just been mental weather. Yeah. Biblical. No, absolutely. Now, coming up in today's show, we've got to look forward to the chat show with unexpected revelations from its guests. No, it's not. Look at that handsome AM. devil. Oh my God, Jimmy Nesbitt's amazing. Oh, He's no. great, okay. isn't he? Okay. I definitely got the wrong dress code for that one. <laughs> you did. It's That's all people were Angela Scanlon's right. asked me anything. We're going to be talking to Angela after 8 o'clock. Did you get a lot of messages about it? Because I was getting messages going, did no one tell Tommy to wear a shirt? He doesn't care, I don't think. Uh, coming up as well later on, writer and podcaster Roisin Ingle. She has gathered together some of the country's biggest personalities for a book about their favourite places in Ireland. And it's all for a very good cause. We'll be finding more about that a little bit later as well. Yeah, I guess one place that's on it is O'Connell Street. Is it? No. It's no. Not on it, it? No, it might be a few decades before We're it makes it onto it. We'll talk about that and make the news later on. It's been a busy weekend in the cinema. Lots on offer. The pick of the flicks being the Banshees of Inna Sheeran. Looks like Colin Farrell could be on for an Oscar this talk about. I'd love it. I'd Amazing. love it for him. He's great. Can't Derek is in Sligo. We've barely seen him all week. He's been all over the country. How's the day shaping up, Derek? Yeah, good morning, team from the Northwest. And look, no jacket today because we have a much more improved, a much more settled start out there today, although uh, Shara's on the way from the Southwest later on tonight. But we've come up here to Yates County this morning because we're off to visit the Sligo Cancer Support Centre. So we're going to be meeting some of the team here on the ground later on this morning. But lads, can we talk about <laughs> that biblical raid we had yesterday? We got washed out of it. Thunder, I know you're a big fan of lightning as well. We're in a big show in Dublin last night in the skies. It was, uh, it was amazing to see. You know what, Derek? You've probably got a couple of minutes there, so nip down to the local shop and get yourself an umbrella. <laughs> You're allowed to wear an umbrella on the yeah. show. <laughs> Yesterday. I, I'm working on it. Hold no. an umbrella, not wear one. No, you don't. he doesn't want the umbrella. He wants he to be a... He was Okay, thanks very much, Derek. It adds the effect. It adds the effect. Does, it does, no doubt. Thanks, Derek. Catch you the later on. The curls that he gets from the rain. He loves Fuck it. Curls. Right, time to get over to the Virgin Media News. Hope here's Hannah Murphy. Thanks, Tommy, and good morning. In the UK, there's even more pressure on Prime Minister Liz Truss after claims that Tory backbenchers were bullied and physically manhandled into backing the government on a vote in the House of Commons last night. The Labour Party sought to ban fracking for shale gas, a policy which Truss recently approved. Conservative whips said the vote was going to be treated as a confidence motion in the government, meaning if the Labour Party passed the motion, it would have triggered an election. It came at the end of another chaotic day for Truss, who faced a grilling from the opposition and the resignation of her Home Secretary. The Speaker of the House has been asked to launch an investigation into claims that Tory MPs were bullied into voting with the government. I would urge you to launch an investigation into the scenes outside the entrance to the no lobby earlier. As you know, members are expected to be able to vote without fear or favour. Yes. And the behaviour code, which is agreed by the whole of the House, says that there shall never be bullying or harassment yes. of members. I saw, I saw members being physically manhandled into another lobby. Back home, there are concerns that rising mortgage interest rates could dampen the benefit of ease lending rules. Yesterday, the central bank announced plans to loosen the lending restrictions, allowing prospective home buyers to borrow up to four times their salary. For the last seven years, that's been capped at three and a half times a buyer's annual wage. The move was brought in to help bridge the affordability gap, but one mortgage expert fears rising interest rates will mean it's not as much of a boost as it might seem. So the higher interest rates are, the less people can borrow. So it mightn't be the case that the, the central bank limits and the, the increase in central bank limits to four times income will help people to be able to afford homes because there will be a restriction. The, the, the central mm. bank rules are a guardrail, but the lender's own rules are, are to be taken into account also. Eight out of ten employers are planning for pay increases next year as businesses continue to struggle with staff shortages. A new IBEC report published today has found more and more companies are focusing on ways to hold on to talent and are looking at offering extra benefits, additional leave, remote working options and higher pay. More than half of its respondents also said they plan to increase their headcount next year. Ukraine has called on residents of Kherson to ignore Russia's evacuation, claiming Moscow is simply trying to take civilians hostage. It comes as President Vladimir Putin has imposed martial law in four annexed regions of Ukraine. 
People gather at the port of the Dnipro River in the southern Kherson region amid evacuations in the area. Footage released by Russian state TV shows residents queuing at the left bank of the river after they received text messages urging them to evacuate immediately to avoid Ukrainian shelling. The station reporting that Russian appointed authorities of the Kherson region plan to evacuate up to 60,000 civilians over the next six days. Kherson was among the first Ukrainian cities seized by Russian forces and is one of four regions incorporated into Russia last month. On Wednesday, Russian President Vladimir Putin declared martial law in those regions. It seems his only tool available to him is to brutalize individual citizens in Ukraine, Ukrainian citizens, to try to intimidate them into capitulating. They're not going to do that. It's not yet clear what it will entail, but legislation indicates it may involve restrictions on travel and public gatherings, tighter censorship and broader authority for law enforcement agencies. Claire Regan, Virgin Media News. In the United States, dozens of vehicles have piled up on a motorway after intense fog swept across Oregon. Up to 60 vehicles were involved in crashes on the southbound lane of the Interstate 5 yesterday, including around 20 trucks. Police told local media one person was killed and three others were taken to hospital. Authorities later closed part of the route and school buses were reportedly used to take stranded motorists to a nearby truck stop. I was in the fast lane, I swerved over and uh, got out of it, hit the brakes and the gal behind me did the same thing too so we didn't collide with anybody. But as we were sitting there we heard uh, crash after crash after crash behind us. There's a lot of damage, there's uh, fuel, there's uh, parts of cars all over the place, uh, just scattered all about. And finally, a new study has found the move towards working from home since the pandemic has fueled a baby boom. Economists behind the working paper say job flexibility helped push US birth rates up more than 6% compared to pre-pandemic levels. It marks the first time fertility has increased during an economic downturn. The paper also suggests the pandemic led many people to begin their families sooner. For car insurance, van insurance, or home insurance, call the Quote Devil. Unless, of course, you've got money to burn. Thank you very much, Emery. We're coming to you live here from the heart of the northwest in Sligo Town this morning. We're getting past 7.30. Let's take a quick look at weather. And at the moment, in fact, we do have that system just hitting Connemara there through South Galway, passing over the Iron Islands. But elsewhere, mainly dry and mainly settled. That's the good news with some scattered showers there into South County Dublin. Now, right across the day, in fact, we're going to see a nice pickup in terms of those bright spells. So a big improvement on where we were yesterday. A little bit of mist lingering onto the hills and the coast, especially into parts of Leinster through Munster as well. But a very mild day in store with top temps of about 14 to 18 degrees, so about 4 degrees above the mean average for this time of year. Finally then, tonight, we're going to see rain pull in across the southwest. So that'll track in a northerly direction once again, just about holding dry across the north northern part of the country with the southeasterly winds picking up pace too strong and gusty especially once again through the southwest with overnight lows back to 7 to 11 degrees so that's how it's shaping up here in Sligo at the moment we'll catch again back live at 8. For first time drivers, young drivers, returning drivers, if you've had an open claim or have had too many penalty points. The quote devil's always got one hell of a now, under new central bank mortgage rules, people can borrow up to four times their salary from next January. Good idea. Surely. Surely. Let What's us know what you think. Is it the right decision? 0896 111 We'd love to hear from you. We're going to be discussing that next. You're very welcome back to the show. The central bank has eased its mortgage lending limits, much to the surprise of the public. <gasps> were you all like that yesterday? Were we, were we all surprised about this? Uh, but what does this mean? Uh, what does this move mean for anyone who's trying to buy the house from first time buyers to people who are older, upsizing, downsizing? Here to discuss the pros and cons with us, our financial advisor, Carl Dieter, and assistant professor, Rory Hearn. It's lovely to have you both here. Morning. Thank you so much because. There's a lot to unpack in this. We're always talking about housing, Rory. You know, we have you in all the time chatting about this. What prompted the decision, Carl, to go, right, people, we need to give them a little bit more from three and a half times their salary to four? Well, the, the rules were brought in after we'd gone through a huge financial crisis. Everyone wanted to create a system that would be safer, make sure this never happens again. I mean, when you look at house prices, it actually has happened again. But 
They wanted to make sure people weren't getting over indebted. They brought out these rules. Uh, they were, by international comparisons, somewhat stringent. And they reviewed them and they said, look, you know, we got this wrong. The downside is there's people who, had they been able to access these rules, would be in a house right now instead of paying overpriced rents. Because the whole, the whole concern, I guess, on the other side was, you know, people go crazy, they borrow too much. You know, the evidence shows that's not the case. And it doesn't show that if you had slightly more, that you'd somehow be in instant danger. So the system is quite safe. And the central bank did the right thing. They said, look, you know, we, 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 we probably didn't make the best choice at the time, or, or maybe they feel they did, but the, it's time to review it. And they found that, uh, that it, was, it was, you know, a change was required. Uh, they've changed how, how they define the first-time buyer as well. What, what's the change there? Well, well a first-time buyer typically means that you've never bought a house anywhere in the world. What they have now is they've also started to accommodate for people where their uh, relationships break down and things. And that's because quite often then you have to start running two households. So they've expanded the definition of that somewhat. Yeah, and people who have been in bankruptcy as well. Rory, what is your take on the fact that after uh, six years now of, of this rule of three and a half times, where house prices have skyrocketed anyway, mm. even when we had limits on it. Mm. What, what do you make of, of increasing the, the, the income to mortgage ratio? Yeah, I think it's a, a mad decision, to be honest. I, I think that if you look at the evidence and the research, <laughs> the central bank governor himself said, this will lead to an increase in house prices. So if he said it, why are they doing it? If they're supposed to be protecting you know, our economic system, this is about ultimately, this is, developers have been lobbying very heavily for an increase in mortgage rules so that people can pay a higher price for what they're building. Um, this is ultimately about, if you think of it, basic economics, we don't have any major increase in supply of housing. So now there's more money chasing that same supply. What's it going to do? It's going to increase prices further. This is what it's going to do. And it's if you think about it, like it's it just seems to me that, the, you know, as I said yesterday on Twitter, the game is rigged. It's for the banks. They said it's you know, for the, the, the financial system. It's for the developers. This is about house prices were starting to ease. They could potentially fall. And now suddenly the central bank says, oh, we're actually going to increase the amount of money people can borrow. What's going to keep uh, house prices propped up? It, do, it does seem like an odd time to do it, Carl, when you think that house prices are starting to drop a bit. We're seeing the banks asking people to borrow more whenever we're seeing rising interest rates going into more debt. Do you not think, can you see where the critics are, are coming with this? Sure, I, look, I, I'm, it's not that I wouldn't have criticism for myself. Okay. So I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to explain rather than endorse, I suppose. Uh, what I would say is, there's a couple of things. We're undersupplied in housing. So it, the forces that you, where people say, oh, house prices are gonna drop, I'm not sure that they're necessarily there. The other thing is that headline that house prices have dropped is on a year on year basis of growth. If you actually look at month on month, what's been happening with prices, they're up either half a percent or one percent every month this year, other than April. Look at it from you know the, the bottom of the market back in kind of 2013 to today, and that line is only going one direction. So you can't have a situation where you say, oh, you know, house prices are going to drop, and yet we still have rampant homelessness. You know, thousands of people come in f fleeing a war. You know, loads of people but requiring housing. They're eventually going to drop. You kind of got to think they're eventually they're going to drop. Oh, yeah. but Tree, trees like, don't grow to the sky. But something like this will just prolong that and keep it propped up. Uh, it, it's it's difficult to assume that because effectively, if, if the people say don't buy houses, then you'd say, well, it, it's going to drive rents up. And rent prices being higher reflect higher house prices anyway. It's a real conundrum. Like, there's no way to get this right. It's incredibly frustrating. But, you know, the central bank are trying to do what they feel is best. Rory, obviously, we need fiscal responsibility. Mm. We're not that long out of the crash. Mm. We all have that in our mind. And we're not living on credit like we used to. We're not mm. talking about giving out 110% mortgages. Single people in this country locked out of the housing market. Mm. Not a hope in hell in three times, like talking to any single people in any city, rural places. Is the issue here that we are letting international funds buy our housing stock rather than the amount of money that we're letting people borrow. Because the banks still have to approve you. It doesn't mean you're gonna get four times your salary because there's the ratio. Is it not who we're allowing to buy the housing stock? It is absolutely that. I think there are two things in this really when we boil it back to, it's not about the lending rules. That's not, you know, it is actually the question of who is buying our housing, as you say, one in 10 of all houses last year, one in 10 were bought by what's called a non-household, which is either a fund or the state itself is buying because they're not building social yeah. housing. And the other thing is the question of supply. 
where is the supply, not just any supply, because what's the point in the supply of thousands of unaffordable rental properties? Where is the supply of affordable housing coming from? That is the question. And the private developers are saying next year they're going to stop building because they don't see it um, in terms of certainty, economic certainty. They've said this. So we're going to see supply falling next year. So this comes back to government. In terms of affordable housing, the figures on government are shocking. They're talking about building between 1,300 to 2,000 um, affordable units per year. Like that is a drop in the well, ocean. But because I think, are the government told they built 20,000 houses this year? No, the I, government didn't. No, the overall, how, overall, by yeah, 20,000. 20, but back in the boom days, we're talking 50, 60, there was 70, 80,000 80, at the height. So 80,000. So, so what's changed? How can we build 80,000 back then, but all of a sudden we're celebrating doing 20,000 now? Because the private construction industry essentially collapsed, completely collapsed after the crash. 70,000 construction again. workers it, it, well, they, emigrated. They are back to a certain extent, but they're not back anything like they were. And also, that, that whole kind of pyramid scheme of the Celtic Tiger was actually built... The last three years of the Celtic Tiger, half of new homes were bought by the buy to let landlords. Mm -hmm. They weren't people buying a home. Yeah, were, it was yeah. that same thing of investor funds, which comes back to yeah. the state has to build. We need a state construction Carl, company. You, yeah, there, there's a lot of problems in construction that are, are, are causing kind of delays. So if you look at during the Celtic Tiger, for every person working in housing or in construction, for every house output, there was two to three workers. Yeah. That was the ratio. Yeah. So if you had 150,000 workers, you could build 50,000 houses. That ratio is broken. It's now more like seven to eight workers for every unit of housing output. So there's, like, like what's causing that is, a, is another whole issue. But to, to, to stick to what we're looking at today is... Houses affordable, not affordable, like no one's, I can't solve that, I don't have all the answers. What I would say though, is in the past banks were able to do these loans, but they could only do a certain amount, say of four times income. And that meant that all the lending was going to people who were a medical doctor rather than someone who was a plumber for the drain doctor. Because banks, you know, credit, they discriminate, they go on whoever's the best bet. Mm. This is actually a broadening of the fairness of the system. So I wouldn't look at like someone achieving home ownership uh, because the people who are wringing their hands about this, most of the time they're thinking, oh, the country, house prices, blah. Most of them have a house. Yeah. Like, put yourself in the shoes of someone who's stuck paying rent of two grand when you could have a, a mortgage for 1300 that you can afford, that you know you can afford, but they won't let you have it. Yeah. And no one looks at the idea of reckless renting where you're out there blowing your whole income on rent. But we say we suddenly get all prudent when it comes to reckless mortgages. Yeah, yeah. Like, we have to have a serious conversation about this. If someone can afford a home and this helps them do that, I don't see how that's a bad thing. Um, I think that this is obviously an issue that is like, listen, when are we ever going? The day we stop talking about housing is the day that we might be on the road to I'll fixing be out of a job. something. <laughs> in, like, it's unbelievable. Um, we just want to say really quickly, you're doing the marathon. I am doing the marathon Rory. at the at the end of the uh, next week, the Dublin Marathon, raising funds for DePaul Trust. You can go over to Just Giving uh, forward slash Rory Hearn if you want to donate for DePaul. Amazing work on homelessness, and keep a shout out for me along the streets of Dublin. Hey, good on Fair you, Rory. play to you, good financial advisor you. Carl Dieter and assistant professor in Manu. Thank you so much, Rory for joining us. We'd love to hear from you this morning 0896 111 whether you're a single person if you're in a couple trying to buy a house we'd love to hear from you. Or you're one of these people who's paying two grand to rent a house and you can't get a bloody mortgage. I mean it must be so so frustrating. Mm -hmm. Now still to come uh, something a little bit different it's the motoring at Mecca we'll be finding out what car makers have unveiled at the Paris Motor Show that's how you say it right. One of those. We'll see you back here in a few minutes. One of the biggest car shows in the world, the Power Paris Motor Show, returns this week for the first time since 2018. I'm on the edge. I mean, I was always, it was like the red carpets and the uh, Paris Motor Show. I was did like, you when do are they coming Insta back? story and all that? I do outfits. it all the time. I'm like, oh my God, Love what it. is the BMW 5 going to be wearing today? I hear to tell us more as motor <laughs> journalist <laughs> Geraldine Herford. BMW 5. Geraldine, how are you? This is for Revit. They love the Paris Motor Show. Like, it's a big deal. It is. It was a lot more low key than it was pre COVID. So it's kind of slowly but surely getting back. But motor shows had sort of taken a knock before COVID and it was because they were proving really expensive for car manufacturers and it was really hard to keep things secret. You know, there was a time when you go to motor shows and something would be revealed and you go, wow. Now with social media, it's so hard to keep anything secret. Everything gets leaked online. So they've lost a bit of their kind of okay. cachet. But even so, it was great to see a motor show back. So were there any big stories, big launches? And um, I think there was a kind of few interesting themes.
names. Obviously, electric cars were dominating, which we expected, but also the Chinese car makers are really making inroads into Europe. So I think they're probably the most interesting car makers at the moment. Okay, let's, because I, when I think, I, I don't think of Chinese car makers. No. I can't think of uh, Chinese Can car you think makers. of one? No. Yeah, you see, no, nobody can. Like I'm going South Korea, Japan. No, 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 I can't think of a Chinese car maker. So yeah, tell us about some. Right, the interesting one was BYD. And these really are the car makers to look at at the moment. Um, they had a seal, which was basically a Tesla Model 3 rival. It's a saloon car. It retails in China for 31,000 euros. At the equivalent of which is about 40% oh. cheaper than Tesla. But the most interesting thing about them is they're the third most valuable car maker in the world, and yet nobody's ever heard of them, especially not in Ireland. They're next only to Toyota and That's Tesla it. in terms of the volume that they sell, yeah. So that was it there. It looks, it's a beautiful looking car. Fabulous car. And the other interesting thing about this um, car maker is they control their own, they make their own chips. Now, you know the way that the chip shortage has yeah. impacted on all of the car makers at the moment. They make their own and they make their own batteries. So they're fairly oh. invincible when it comes to you know what they can do they're controlling so, their own supply line yeah so they're really really interesting so are they like having never heard of them and they want to move into the european mm. market and they're the third most valuable selling the volume of cars mm. so is that in purely in the chinese market or is it all over asia well, no, that's that's sort of globally at the moment because they have actually, they did um, sell a, um, a small SUV in Norway last year. So they've been testing the okay. market already. They have signed deals with various European dealers. They are coming to the UK by the end of the year. So it's only like a matter of time before they come to Ireland. But it'll be really interesting, a bit like MG who've come into the market with really cheap electric cars. Yeah. It'll really shake it up. And I think the biggest competitor for all of the European car makers at the moment is China because BYD will be the first, but there will be others that will come as well. So we're going to see a big shake up in the market in the next few years and I think that's the one thing the Paris Motor Show did kind of capture. Now you mentioned that it was dominated by electric cars mm. and we know the French President Emmanuel Macron was there so he's talking about bigger subsidies for poorer families to mm. buy electric vehicles because we would all love to get an electric car but they're so expensive so yeah. is this something that the Irish government could take a leaf out of his book? I think it's a really difficult one to do because what he's doing is he's, he's I think he's increased the grant from 6,000 euros to 7,000. That's still oh. a big gap between <laughs> the cost of a new car or any sort of a car and, you know, trying to, you still have to make up that gap. I think the biggest problem at the moment is we just don't have a second-hand market with electric cars. And remember, with Brexit, we can't import cars from the UK in the yeah. way that we used to. It's not nearly as attractive. So I think we need, and unfortunately, the new cars of today are the, the second-hand cars of tomorrow. We really do need to grow that new car yeah. market. But also, it's so funny when this is all about the environment and it's but it's still an issue of but you'll change your car every five years and you're like if we had cars that lasted for 30 years yeah, like they yeah. used to our environmental impact would where's be where's the less. money in that though, i know Maren, there's amazingly the they don't want things that last um so we always think whenever you think of hydrogen fueled vehicles yeah. you think of zeppelins <laughs> blowing gone. up mm. and that they're never going to come back not according to the Paris Motor Show, where we all hold on. Now we're not. We haven't. Even, we haven't even gotten to grips with electric in Ireland. There's not enough charging, and now they want us to fill up a hydrogen car. Yeah, there's kind of two schools of thought about hydrogen at the moment. In Europe, most of the car makers have said no, it's not going to work. Whereas in Asia, if you think of Hyundai and Toyota, it is huge. Like the Japanese have, I think they're looking at 800,000 hydrogen cars on the roads by 2030. What? I think China's looking at a million by 2035. Totally different mindset, completely. Whereas in Europe, it's very much been written. Off. Now that said, every now and again, some car maker comes out and goes, do you know what? Do you remember we talked about hydrogen? Let's do it again. BMW are due to bring out at the end of this year a hydrogen version of their X5. Um, Renault, as you say, showed um, a Renault Scenic um, hydrogen. There were a few other hydrogen cars at the Paris Motor Show. So it's one of those things that keeps reappearing. But like we've nowhere to fill them up in Ireland. So it's the chicken <laughs> and egg situation. That's a hydrogen situation. car there. So yeah, I'm just Nomex. Say, so that was a, a new French car company and they're going to bring that out. I think it's 2025 they're looking but they're taking orders now. It's a bit like Tesla. You can put down a deposit. Where but as I said, up? how do you fill up your hydrogen? You can, well, you can in Europe. I think there's about, I mean, it's tiny, about 230 hydrogen filling stations across Europe. I mean, versus the number of filling proper filling stations. But there's nowhere in Ireland. And again, it's kind of this thing. It's a really, really expensive infrastructure to put in. So who's going to put it in if they don't have the cars? And nobody's going to bring in the cars without the infrastructure. So I think we're going to be talking about hydrogen for a long where, time. Where do you see the future of the car industry? Because you talk about the chips. You talk about there's no second-hand market mm. like where are we looking in the next bikes 
according to, to, to the state of the roads in Ireland. Yeah, I think I think the car industry is in for a very rocky road at the moment because they've they've been dealing with the chip shortage. I think we're finally going to see an end to that, or at least a, a, a kind of ease up of it by 2023. But then with the cost of living crisis, mm. where are the customers for the cars going to be then? I think that's going to be a huge problem. I think long term as well, what we're looking at in terms of car ownership is a dramatic change, and you're probably going to see like a Netflix approach to car ownership, where you literally just have a car for a couple of months, you might have a four by four in the winter, you might have no car in the summer, you might have a smaller car. And I think that's what we're looking at. Because if you if you look at everything else, we don't own stuff anymore. No. We don't, you know, we don't take up, but the, even books have moved to Kindle and Spotify and all of these things. And I can't see why the car industry won't move to the same thing. So I think that's essentially what we're looking at. Not today that, or tomorrow. Environmentally, is that not... Well, it'll reduce the number of cars, you yes, see, because you'll only have a car when you need it. Yeah, no, 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 I do, I get that. And fact, you'll but dip then... in and out of car ownership, you see, rather than having a car parked for 23 hours a day, which is what most people do. And they have this, you know, depreciating assets sitting outside their door. Okay. So that's, that's what I can see. Now, how the car companies will make a profit out of that will be a huge challenge that's for the them. That's mm. a funny old Netflix model, aren't isn't making it? a profit. Yeah. Interesting. Well, Geraldine. Yeah, yeah thank you. See you on the Zeppelin. Yeah. Sure, it'll be yeah. fun. <laughs> Geraldine Herbert, thank mm. you so much for joining us yeah, this morning. Yeah, interesting. Let's know what you think of that. 0896 111 would be cool, wouldn't it? OK, after the news, we're going to look at the stories making this morning's papers. See you in a few minutes. Welcome back. It's time to take a look at this morning's papers. We'll start with the Irish Times. It's headline, only half of Irish wastewater treated to EU standards. Only half of Ireland's sewage was treated to EU environmental standards in 2021, well below the EU average of 90%, according to the latest Environmental Protection Agency report on urban wastewater treatment. The exam relates with that same story. Millions of litres of sewage in our waters daily. Enough sewage to fill three Olympic-sized swimming pools is poured into Irish seas and rivers every day, 16 years after the EU deadlines passed to meet treatment standards. Most of the 86,000 yet to get COVID bonus are nursing home staff. Some 46,000 staff who worked in the front line of the COVID-19 crisis are still waiting for their €1,000 pandemic recognition payment. That's the front page of the Irish Independent. The mirror goes with Hutch murder trial. Burn blasted in head, face, abdomen, hand and legs. The murder trial of Jerry, uh, Jerry Hutch heard yesterday the high regency gun victim David Byrne was blasted six times. The star leads with that same story. Their headline, Hutch in the dock, blasted six times with AK-47. The sun leads with, I heard shots, screams and shouting. The sounds of shots and screaming rang out at the Dublin Regency Hotel as panicked onlookers fled the scene of David Byrne's killing. The trial of Jerry the Monk Hutch has heard. And the Hurl's front page, I was in fear of my life. A witness to the Regency Hotel murder of David Byrne yesterday told the special criminal court how he feared for his life when gunmen stormed into the boxing weigh-in. Cost of living one-off boosts needed again. An expert from a state body has said that further one-off measures will be required to support those on low incomes next winter. It's the top story on the Daily Mail. Now, do we read three... Three... What are you, what are you drinking there? It's the manky water that, that we're drinking at the minute. That's you've got insane. A, you've got a, three Olympic-sized swimming pools of sewage are flowing in every day in urban centres. Oh, yeah, it's insane, that. It's insane. That is, if it's in your area, and there's loads of like places not having boil water notices. Anyway, 0896 111 but, um, um, Also, yeah. did you see the video yesterday of uh, Fine Gael TD, Paul Kyo, talk standing up talking about the state of O'Connell Street? Aideen Finnegan is here, everybody. Good Hello. Morning, Aideen Hi, Finnegan. How are you? Sorry, Aideen. He I... needed his prop first. We had to do that. Yeah. Yes. I nice. did see that video and he used the word druggies to describe people with addiction who are, you know, strung out on O'Connell Street, involved in drug dealing and probably some petty crime to fund that habit. I think it was an extraordinary comment to make, really, because people who wring their hands about the state of O'Connell Street are probably partly responsible for the state of it themselves when people can't get drug support services in their own communities because people say, not in my backyard, thank you very much. I don't want those druggies around here. He did they have a what the takeaways, to be fair, as well. Now, O'Connell Street has a problem. It does have a it problem. It has a problem. And it is not just crime, it is dereliction, it yep. is bad planning. I mean, absolutely, there could have been some sort of curation of what businesses go into O'Connell Street, how oh. their facades look. There's none of that, or at least uh, ostensibly there's been nothing uh, been done about it recently. I guess people get into these... It's a kip. <laughs> it looks like a kip. Like, it's, I used to love... 
when I was small, coming up to Dublin to go to O'Connell Street, the gorgeous streets, the Big wide time. fairway. My father, until the day he died, loved going up and going to the Gresham Hotel. And tourists. You are O'Connell after all. Like, yeah, there we go, there that's is. us. We've got one in Limerick, so we're all right. <laughs> but it's, 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 I, I loved it. I just remember it in my mind's eye of being this magical place. And it's Would so you go depressed. now? It's, I, whenever I go, I, I, I go over all the time, but... It's it's manky, and it's and it's in, like it's not just talking about people who have drug. Why do these people have a drug addiction? Exactly. Have we left Dublin's north inner city? Go. It, there's nothing about prevention. It's like what you want to just lock people up. You cannot you cannot fix O'Connell Street without fixing the social issues around it. You know, Garthy cannot be arresting every person who's high as a kite and uh, needs to be in a hospital or a mm -hmm. drug treatment but, facility. They the, can't do the, it. But the Taoiseach is planning to inform, you know, put together a task force yeah. to try and tackle this. He says he's putting together a task force, but I mean, I've, I've lived in the North Inner City before. I lived there for a number of years and there's been task force and meeting and, you know, like, <laughs> the problem is nobody can agree on it. Mm. And the task force is either maybe not resourced highly enough or it goes beyond the extension of what the city can do. Because obviously, if you have laws, uh, they, they are on a national level, you know, so there's so, there's such a big, and it's not just O'Connell Street. And even if you hide this, if you move it off into another street, it just happens there you know instead. What? But yeah. you know what, Aideen? It's not just Dublin either. It's this not. is in cities all over the country. Yeah. And this the homeless crisis is frightening. And yep. yes, he said druggies, but it's people who are taking drugs who are unfortunately in a terrible situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and we're seeing it all over the streets. And, and it's, uh, it's really not on. If you're in a position to be able to say these are just druggies, I guarantee you your life is in a better way than yeah. that. Yes, but I do feel that he was just trying to make the point. No, but yeah, then he but goes on about woke. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not PC. He's doubled down on that now. He yeah, has. now it's like, oh, I'm getting attention for this. That's not <laughs> okay, that. We well. don't care about you getting attention. The fact is, is that there is an issue. And um, in 2021, January 2021, the guard said, we have, we're losing control of Dublin's north inner city. It's mm -hmm. like, this is COVID. And they were like, We've, you are giving us no resources. There's nothing we can do. And you cannot just lock people up who need medical attention. And where are the supports for the areas that people are coming yeah. from? Where, I, like we talk to Lynn Rowan about this all the time. Mm. It's about giving support before this happened. Where's the social contract? Uh, let's find it, like from Sorry. people at home as well. 0896 111 I mean, are you scared to go into the city centre? Yeah. I mean, if we've tourists, we're trying to bring tourists back into the country yeah. again. And it's just, it's a sad state of affairs what's going on there. And yeah, absolutely, Michal Martin has said he's going to set up a task force. A another task as force. You say, let's have another task force. What difference is that going <laughs> to yeah. make? Donny O'Sullivan was saying, you know, Donny O'Sullivan from CNN, he yeah. was like, I used to work in the tourist office on O'Connell Street in Dublin and tourists would walk in shook going, what's going on? What's going on? What? This is not the Ireland we were promised. But it's not about tourists. It's about us who live here mm -hmm. loving well, we're all where tourists we are. The, yeah, exactly. You know um, what I mean? Listen, uh, well, it probably could be worse, but at least we have a government to maybe try and put together a task force. Our worst yeah. thing is Paul Kyo saying, druggie, yeah. we've, had, we've got politicians crying and being manhandled into Parliament. So what's there going have on been in the UK? absolute scenes uh, in the House of Commons yesterday. OK, I'm going to try and break this down. B basically, scuffles, are, we're hearing reports of fisticuffs. Yeah. Essentially, there was a chaotic day in the... In, in Westminster yesterday, anyway, when Suella Braverman, who was the Home Secretary, resigned over a technical breach. Let's not get into that. Anyway, technically, she resigned. Technically on purpose. Was so someone now, looking for a way out? <laughs> so now we have a Prime Minister who's lost her Chancellor, her Finance Minister, and her Home Secretary, all in a very short space of time. That's bad enough, that's chaotic enough. However, there was a vote to be held in the House of Commons yesterday on fracking. Mm. Now, the Conservatives had uh, you know, gone into the general election in 2019 saying, we don't want to do fracking. No, 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 fracking's not on the cards, but this is something that Liz Truss put back on the agenda. So there's a lot of Conservatives, Tories, who actually don't want to vote for fracking, no, but they were told yeah. they were going to have to, or they were going to lose their party whip. There was some confusion over whether Sorry, you're saying we will lose our our careers are over if we don't vote in line with this. Uh, but it turned out that the or it was reported that the chief whip and the deputy chief whip had resigned, so nobody could get an answer on whether if I vote for this or not. Then it turned out the chief chief whip and the deputy whip didn't resign. They're actually still in post. So oh well, they, we don't know if they resigned and then unresigned. Well, we don't. That's true. What? But they were still in situ at the time of the vote. So there was in the lobbies there was. You have to vote for this, M manhandling, accusations of bullying. What are Labour making of this? Well, can we just take a look yesterday of uh, Kerr Starmer, where he took to the stage like he was at Glastonbury at the dispatch box yesterday. Take a look at this. That says it all. I've got the list here. 45p tax cut, gone. Yeah. Corporation tax cut, gone. Yeah. 20p tax cut, gone. Yeah. Two-year energy freeze, gone. Yeah. Tax-free shopping, gone. Yeah. Economic yeah. credibility, yeah. gone. Yeah. 
and her supposed best friend, the former Chancellor, he's gone as well. They're all gone. So why is she still here? Yeah. Thrust. Gone. Maybe is that what you're going to do? Kind of a 21 seconds to go about that, <laughs> isn't there? there is. It's like he's on stage and then they started getting into it. I mean, Keir Starmer has never been cool, never <laughs> more cooler than that, has he? Uh, 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 it's a, it's a bit of a mess over yes, there. I mean, it, is. it is a mess, but you know what? It matters because, yeah. you know, it matters. It, it impacts mortgages. It impacts the price of food. That wouldn't bleed people. over here. We yeah. can't be too smug it's about it. Absolutely. It's not a laughing matter. Listen, from the Irish Times, uh, journalist Aidan Finnegan, thank you so much for joining Aye, us this morning. Aidy. Cheers. We'll be back with you in Ireland AM very shortly. <laughs>
And don't I know it? After the break, we're going to be chatting to Angela Scanlon about Ask Me Anything. Hi, Hi Angela! Hello! Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Now she's the meat lass making celebrities squirm with her series and kicking shoes up on the screen. <laughs> Angela Scanlon's Ask Me Anything and yeah, little I was recently in the hot seat. There we go. We're trying to we're trying to keep it. So Tommy went on this show, delighted yes. for it. But before we chat to you, Angela, I'll say nothing. We'll, we're gonna see. Will we remind you of a certain live? I'm already in enough let's, trouble. Let's go. Let's take a look at this. <laughs> I, uh, we obviously won Grand Slam, lifted yeah. the trophy, brilliant. I thought I'd, I'd take inspiration from Jimmy over here and, and celebrate. If you're going in, go in. <laughs> Make the most of it. So, Do yeah. you know what? Hold your... Hang tight. Oh, no. <laughs> Hang tight. We'll see you in action first, yeah? Delighted to see you. <laughs> but, uh... Right, come on, boys. Please don't let me down here. <laughs> what about a rise? Hey! They call her the queen of the land And her hair ran over her shoulder Tied up with a black velvet band What about the rain? Happy ball, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's, a, it's just glorious. <laughs> it never... Like, what about the <laughs> it just never gets old. It it's never fine. gets old. Listen, it's probably more embarrassing than ten siblings that one. But the fact that I don't it's actually not. the fact that I actually don't even remember that. I was just about to because... say, you dad, like I'm looking at you there. You look like a different person, oh. do you? Oh. You yeah, well... vibed a bit, haven't you? Yeah, I know. You're I... having a bit of crack on the new Vicky, series, I the do show. Know, I'm aren't having you? the time of my life. Thank you for coming on. You have to come on. As oh well. yeah, sure. I do. Did you not tell Tommy that everyone gets fancy? What? Did you not tell Tommy? Every he shows oh, up in a t-shirt. Was everyone, everyone in RT going? Well, Tommy Jimmy, Ball's never going to make it over here, is he? Well, you knew who you were on with, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. And, like, Jimmy Nesbitt's a bit of a dapper man. Pippa obviously didn't disappoint. Your man over here <laughs> with his T-shirt. I was like, it's Saturday night, pet, not Wednesday morning. I actually did turn up in a T-shirt, <laughs> and then uh, the people behind the scenes kind of said... Uh, are, you, are you getting changed? I said, oh, yeah. Which is lovely just before shirt. you go on air, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Is that what you're wearing? Is that, is that what you're wearing? <laughs> How yeah. he told me he was doing was that he sent me a picture of uh, him holding a glass of wine going, come here, you might have to pick up the slack tomorrow morning. <laughs> we'll see what's happening. <laughs> so you're having a bit of fun on yeah, this. Yeah, we're having a ball, honestly. But you're doing yeah. the, the kind of old, the gay burn thing of keeping everyone on the couch this year. Everyone on the couch. So we like build as we go along. So um, yeah, and that's been so much fun because I think what happens is you don't have what some people feel like is an intense one to one. And sometimes like there's just magic that comes out when it's not about Tommy, we're talking to Pippa, but he's like, huh? Chipping in. And there's just lovely little moments of interaction. It's about that kind of chemistry between the three people on yeah. the couch as well, which is really fun in the making of it. Cause we're like, oh, how they get, oh, that's quite unexpected pair those two yeah. the three together so it's been amazing and we also have a live audience which really just changes the the dynamic it, it, it was great fun like it was great fun and because season one of course was in covid times yeah. and there was spacing and you weren't allowed to have that big audience but there was a great energy in there and it was, and because it's asked me and it was actually pippa's question asking me how long are you married yeah <laughs> that was the one that really got me scuppered so <laughs> pippa should be doing the game <laughs> I was sure. but it was like hold on a second you're not going to be the one asking the questions <laughs> yeah. get me the into good trouble thing, the good thing here is that lucy never watches anything he does on yeah. television Although they made the bloody papers, so it got <laughs> sent know, it to I her. Saw that. But I like it kind of feels it's quite loose. And I think what happens is that people forget yeah. they're on the couch. So like even at one point during last week's show, which is on RT Player, Tommy is like, we're talking about something else. And Tommy says to Pippa, that's a lovely dress. <laughs> It's like we're on telly here, oh, Tommy. Yeah, right. It's so it's wonderful. And we've Jason Byrne on this Saturday with Rachel Riley from Countdown, who's an absolute hoot, and yeah. Erica Cody, who is it's my first time meeting Erica. She's she's brilliant and again, Real. just lovely madness. When you got the call, you know, when when this show was coming up, yeah. It, because it's a big deal, you know. Yeah. A weekend TV show, a Saturday night TV show, you know, we all remember Kenny Live and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Through the years, Brendan O'Connor. Were you trepidatious going, oh God, or was it like, this is what I wanted? A bit of both. Yeah. A bit of both. It was kind of the dream gig for me would be that. But also the names that you mentioned, it's like, 
the lads, first yeah. of all, but it's like those household kind of, yeah, you're at home with them on Saturday. It feels like a it feels like there's a lot of eyes on you. And I don't think that hit me until I came home, actually, and started recording. Because I was kind of slightly removed from it. I was like, this sounds like a great idea. And then suddenly you're like, well, my mom's going to watch. She's going to tell me if that dress was awful, first and foremost. But like, you have a sense of the feedback and just how uh, how visible you are, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Because you did the holiday show getaways. Yes, which we I missed. did as well. We, it was we like a missed. sliding doors moment. Yeah, telling. I know, which was a shame. Yeah. But you then, you kind of finished up with that, then decide, right, pack my bags, off to London. I was sacked, by the way, I should say. <laughs> well, <laughs> they, basically, they, sh they shot the show as soon as I this said, we're not doing this anymore. Sorry, Tommy. <laughs> You're not great. But it sounds like I packed my bags for free. Well, what I, happened? I didn't have a job. Right. So I, so I left. Yeah. yeah. Hold I mean, on, you were sacked. I was sacked. Yeah. From getaways. From getaways. Yeah. I mean, gently. It wasn't like I did anything. How's that possible? What did you do on the I holiday? Know, I never got told. <laughs> but for whatever reason, it was just not the right fit anymore. Did you go down to a beach and say, do you know what? This beach is rubbish. <laughs> this is absolute <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell the truth about Santa Ponza. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't stop me. Watch your back. Um, but yeah, that's moved so to London because mm. it's all, always seen like you know when an Irish person goes over to London for a while, you yes. can kind of you know you're back home. It's like, what do you want to do? Yeah. But it's a big move. It's a big move. Yeah, how, yeah. like, you know... How did I find that move? Is yeah, that and you... Because, my God, between Robot Wars, the one show, the amount of stuff that you've done over there, your home yeah. made perfect. Yeah. Like, you certainly made a mark in a short period of time. Well, it's not that short. I'm 10 years in London. And it doesn't feel like... I kind of have to remind myself of that because it feels like it's gone by in the blink of an eye. But, yeah, it's been... I've had a good run there, you know? But it was... It was a big move at the time. It was kind of like, you know, I dragged... Roy over, we weren't married at the time, but it was, um, it felt like a lot was resting on that. And I felt a lot of that pressure. I was like, I've, I've made a statement. I'm not coming home mm. with my tail between my legs. So I, I worked, you know, I worked hard and I got lucky and I had people who supported me along the way. What's, ah, there he is. Ah, nice. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's been great, but it's lovely. Like, I love the fact that I can kind of, do you both know, now. yeah, do both, yeah. hopefully. And, and you yeah. have the two little girls as well, Ruby yes. and Marnie, who's just born, what, back in February time? February, yeah. Um, what's the excitement with that? Do, do they get to come back to Dublin? Have you taken them back? Or how hard is it? Because you're obviously flying over to film. He's trying to make me cry. Isn't I was he? just about to say, <laughs> you're pushing the man buttons. The kids are all like, like, no, but like, you know. these are the sort of commitments. Like, do you know what I mean? People kind yeah. of say, ah, she's got her own show it's yeah. easy but you're leaving the kids behind with yeah. your husband mm -hmm. to go off and kind of follow your dream I suppose in a sense yeah and look it's the forever you know it's it's the thing that you wrestle with all the time as a mum as a dad whatever or you know anyone you make sacrifices and there are things that you do in order to follow certain other things and it's tricky because last year we all moved home lock stock. Yeah. Ruby's now in school. That wasn't a you know an option for us. So I'm I'm over and back, and uh, it's it's hard. I also get a night's sleep sometimes. So there's a Dream. there's a off. payoff. Could there oh, be yeah. a Killian Murphy situation that as soon as they start getting an English accent, you're like I'm gone. I'm oh, going back well, home. You know what? Um, her accent is a little, it's a, it's a bit saucy. It's very mixed, okay? So English people are like, oh, her Irish accent. We kind of hear, you know, all my family are like, oh, she's a bit la da The other day I said to her, you know, Friday now, it's her last day at school on Friday. I say, you know, you get to dress up. And she went, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I've got, right, her. Yeah. I've got her. I've got her for a oh while. Oh, my God. <laughs> Listen, before we go, we've yeah. got our own little ask me anything quick oh, fire questions. Wish. Let's go hit on. you with it. Right. Okay. Quick, my first. eye is leaking already. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, when I'm nervous. Okay, number one, uh, worst Both. person you've ever interviewed? Tommy. Tommy Bow. Okay. Ah, sorry, okay. Worst Heather. job you've ever had? Oh, worst job I've ever had. Oh, I was going to name the company. Uh, it was doing data entry with a husband and wife couple who never told me they were married until they started to feed scones to each other across the <laughs> thing. Well, that's okay. I know, weird. Uh, most famous person in your phone? Most famous person in my phone? Uh, Chris O'Dowd? Cool. That's yeah, good, nice. that's good, that's good. First celebrity crush? First celeb... Dieter Brummer. Well done. Cool. Shane, Omen Shane and Omen away. Yes. When he died on the, the beach. The curtains are ah, stop. I'm when, not over it. When, oh, no, he died with Angel. Oh, oh right. Yeah, so yeah, quick yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Your most embarrassing habit. Most embarrassing habit? 
Oh, God, my, my leaky eye. It's not really a habit, but it happens all the time. It happens. I don't know whether it's psychosomatic. It's like just droop. I did have a late night filming last night, but it leaks. And it's then not a habit. It's not, no, it's not a habit. OK, what's my bad habit? I'm not cleaning up after myself. Good on you. No, listen, sorry. Angela, listen, it's a pleasure to have you. Thanks for Thank watching. So and really, much. I enjoyed the show last well, week. Listen, we had a ball. You set the bar high. It was high. great crack, because yeah. I've done a few of those shows, but it was definitely most And relaxed. they're all most rubbish, fun. aren't they, by Ah, uh, by far, most fun. Yeah. Really yeah. enjoyed it. Of course. What about her eyes? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be scaring her. She doesn't take to it too well. <laughs> She's a little uh, jumpy. Angela Scanlon's <laughs> Ask Me and it continues. It's on Saturday night, of course. It's on from 9.30 and it's a great... Who are you going to have on this week? We have Jason Byrne. Who did I say? Rachel, Rachel Riley and Erica Cody. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm off to go to Oh, my sleep. gosh. Just <laughs> Inspired by nature, powered by light. Beko Harvest Fresh, sponsors cookery on Ireland AM. You're very welcome back. Now we have a cheeseburger. Even Quentin Tarantino would be proud of this morning. Oh, what's that, what's that all about? For some reason, Jack O'Keefe, you're doing a burger inspired by Pulp Fiction? So they said to me, do you want to do a, a food recipes based off of your favourite movie? And I was like, do you really just go blank? Boom. Oh. Nothing. Empty. And I was like, <laughs> Every what morning. have I seen recently? I was like, Oh, you were a bit tipsy the other night watching Pulp Fiction. He ate a cheeseburger in it. Oh, the Kahuna was burger, was it? Like Kahuna the... burger. Yes. So I love this it. is just my classic American cheeseburger. It's really simple, really cheap, and really delicious. And coming into the weekend, if you have kids or even if you have a grown adult, like, well, I'm not an adult, but if you have a grown human sitting at home, it's a great meal to have. It's a great bit of fun, right? You don't What's have to sell like a burger. The, the I don't, no, I don't. You don't have right. to I'm going to get on that cooking, right? Oh, I love that. I haven't seen Pulp Fiction in so long. Love to watch oh, it again. So there you good. go now, yeah. this weekend. Yeah, this weekend. So that's what yeah. you'll do. Get the TV on, get your burgers, right? We got high fat mince. So mm -hmm. ask your butcher for a high fat mince for making burgers or just get the cheapest mince in the supermarket because it has the most fat. <laughs> okay. Hot skillet or frying pan. Look at the smoke coming off of it, yep. right? Yeah, it's extremely hot. Your meatball down. I just take the mince, make it into a small little meatball, season it, parchment paper. So you don't put any like egg yolk or anything, Nothing. anything else Nothing. in just, it? Just no. a little bit of salt. Some raw onion over it like that. Yeah. Parchment paper and then just push it down and smash it out. Okay, that's right. one. Oh, OK. So these are just kind of like patties, almost, that you see in burger chains and all exactly, that sort of stuff, yeah. right? Exactly, exactly. And what's with the onions you're you pushing into it? Just, just adds more flavour to it, it kind of cooks it in. And in the summertime, I'd leave the onions away, but now in the winter, it's nice to have the kind of caramelised burnt onion flavour going through your and burger. And for the people who don't want to put their hands into a jumping hot frying pan, you can do that out, outside as well. You don't have oh, to you do can, it in there. An empty, uh, an empty wine bottle. You yeah. push down, same Or even thing. you could have them probably flattened you before you put them on. Yeah. Yeah. I find when you smash it down, you get a really nice, delicious crust on the bottom of the burger. Mm. So about two minutes per side. I have a mixing bowl here with a, about a teaspoon of sugar inside in it to make our burger sauce. Okay. Mayonnaise. This is really simple and really quick. Yum. As they say, ketchup. Just about a teaspoon or so. You can see I'm very accurate when it comes to my measuring. Yeah. A few gherkins and a little bit of, see the pickle juice? Yeah. Bit of that as well. Chuck that in. Okay. That plastic American do you, mustard. Do you kick the gherkins out whenever you're having a, nope. a burger? No. More gherkins, More the gherkins. better. And then oh, I yeah. really? eat the gherkins on the side no, as well. No, you don't. Oh, little pinch them. of celery salt in after the gherkins, and, and you can use normal salt. Sorry, celery salt. celery salt? Celery salt. Very important for that kind of American flavour. Where do you get that? Tesco. Right. Or any other or supermarket anywhere, that yeah. doesn't sponsor me. <laughs> I've never heard of celery sauce before, right? And then paprika and garlic powder mixed all together, and that's my burger sauce. Lovely. Really could quick, you, really easy. You get, um, I presume, any salt is fine, is it? Any salt is fine, yeah. yeah. Okay. Any salt is fine. And why sugar, actually, as well? Sugar makes it more addictive. OK. It is actually, yeah. it's not, it really does sweeten up that special sauce. <laughs> what we call yeah. American cheese, it's which sweet. is just a kind of orange coloured plastic, but. Delicious. It's part of the. listen, it's not the healthiest meal, but if you're watching Pulp Fiction or a good movie this weekend, why not treat yourself? Exactly. Absolutely. Love it. Right, now your burger buns, okay? And I use a. It's like, a little kind of street foodie tray like this just to kind of add to oh, the Oh, there's team. Samuel L. Jackson eating this burger. Well, now he's eating a big. Um, that's the Kahuna burger. It? Is it? Yeah. I thought that that's, he. He was loving it. That's why he loved it. Right, okay. It's a good burger. Wait, you taste this one. I wonder, did he have gherkins in his? Definitely. It's the rules. You don't like gherkins, Tommy, do you? I, 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 if I was to go and get a burger and a gherkins, and I generally take them out, yeah. 
If we go <laughs> You're not taking a, these ones out. No, if no. we ever go to a famous <laughs> fast food restaurant, yeah. I will have your gherkins. Okay. There perfect. we go. And then a bit of butterhead lettuce in the bottom just to make it a little bit healthy. And then just scoop out your burgers. Now, there's a big problem here, Jack. It looks like you've made just... Is this two burgers you've made? I have more to make another one for you off here, Tommy. Don't worry. Okay. I'll keep you fed. I'm just going to get to try it. We can get Pop some of those onions on top. You're putting the burger on top of the burger. Oh, yeah. Stack it up. A double whammy. It's the big kahuna. Oh, OK. Right, go on. Let's... Uh, right. Warren, try it out there. Put a lid on it. Welcome to and the And then just to treat you, I made some skinny uh, fries. Oh, are you treating me because I'm allowed here? I'm, I'm, oh, you're so good. And with, with the fries, all I did was I took a Maris pipe potato, cut it into little matchsticks, fried it at 140 degrees. Would you like a knife? I do love the matchstick potato, uh, chips, to be fair. Mm, yummy. Look at that. Look at fall. the juice yeah, coming out. Go on. Go on, man. Go on. Thanks, you're very Mind good. That no, take the bigger side. Mind that no, shirt, okay. no. Take the bigger and side. Go on, just eat, eat, eat. Right, <laughs> here we go. Mm. The notes. You got the drip. My poor notes are wrecked. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, the sauce is really good. And mm. do, you like, do you like the gherkins in it? Mm, yeah. It yeah. all works together. I can fancy it up and come up with some chefy sentence if you want, but I'm not going to. It's just a tasty burger. That's a tasty burger, Jack O'Keefe. Thank no you. So, it was, thanks for allowing me into the kitchen and actually getting some food today. That is so nice. He, I'll, I won't have him doing this now, um, the way you always do that. After the break, celebrities are sharing their favourite Irish locations to highlight mental health. It all will make sense when we chat to author mm. Roisin Ingle. Talk to you in a second. Yo. Inspired by nature, powered by light. Becco Harvest Fresh, sponsors cookery on Ireland AM. long enough to digest that <laughs> burger. Uh, now a diverse group of Irish personalities have come together to share their most loved Irish locations. It's all part of a new book entitled My Perfect Place in Ireland. Author and journalist Roisin Ingle joins us now. Hello Roisin, Hello. how are you? Hello, how's it going? Roisin, how are you? Morning. So t t tell us why we get, like it does what it says in the tin, but what's yeah. the idea behind the book? Well the idea behind the book is we got in, uh, it's in association with the Lust for Life, which you know is now Breslin Brezzi's Brezzi charity. charity. And it's a brilliant charity. They go into schools all over Ireland. They help younger people with their mental health and how to be more mindful and all of that kind of thing. And so we, we basically asked a whole load of people, what is their perfect place? Where's the place where they get solace? What's their happy place that um, is a place where they feel relaxed and that they love most in Ireland? And you might expect that it'd be all the usual tourist attractions, but I think when you dig down, it's all about family. It's about mm. the places that we're used to from childhood. It's about nostalgia. So there was loads of different ones and uh, loads of great people who got involved. So it, it, uh, It's amazing, I, but I couldn't believe how many people picked around <laughs> Dublin. Yeah. You know, it's because... <laughs> Tommy's like, who wants to I know, be in Dublin? Dublin? But it's only but, half of them, but yeah, I know, I take your point. still half, like, it's still a lot. If <laughs> you think Dublin's of... brilliant, though, sorry, yeah. I have to. Yeah, well, I know, the thing is, we hear such <laughs> bad things in the news all the time about Dublin, but there's actually some really lovely places around the capital, which is amazing. But you mentioned Brezzy there, so it's yeah. kind of in conjunction, because uh, he picked the lakes of Mullingar. Yeah, Mullingar, he did. And he spoke about, you know, the lakes of Mullingar are really important for him, almost kind of like as a getaway. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of people mention the same sort of thing. That's the thing. It's like a place where you can go put yourself back together almost. I mean, he talks about um, when Kurt Cobain died and he was a huge fan of him. It's three of his friends, they cycled off to the lakes. It's a 20-minute cycle from his home just to kind of, you know, express their sadness and they were confused. They didn't know what had gone on. And he has found that during his life, that's a place that he goes to when everything falls apart. And he also, during the pandemic, ended up swimming there every day. So it, for loads of different reasons. But um, another person is Daniel O'Donnell, who um, we all know, obviously, big Donegal man. But Critch Island, where there's a golf course now. But there's a great story in the book where um, Daniel, as a kid in the 60s, used to stand on a mark at the edge of this beautiful Atlantic sort of coastline. And his mother had been born in Owe Island just across. So you'd yeah. stand on your mark, the family would see you, and they'd get the cura and they'd go out to a road. To, is he a golfer, thing. though? He is a golfer. Oh, God, yeah. Did you not know I didn't that? Know Daniel yeah, yeah, he's a, a big golfer. Okay. He says he's go. not very good, but he is a golfer. I don't know. So he's got light under a bushel there, our Daniel, <laughs> I think, like just all things. But in that, because as you mentioned, it's it, there's a bunch of different people, everyone from Darrow, yeah. Brian, Daniel O'Donnell, Lynn Rowan, my daughter. Marion yeah, Keyes, Ardlo Hanlon. Where's Ardlo Hanlon's? Herbert Park. I know. So, uh, Herbert sure. Park is where he went drinking after the intracert, which is now the junior cert, for the first time. And it's a place that he, when he, before he was 
known before he was... That's <laughs> where he went bush drinking. Did, yeah, basically. That's yeah, yeah. Fair. He was boarding in Blackrock College. They got the night off to go... Uh, well, they, obviously, they didn't want him to go bush drinking, but that's what he did. But anyway, Herbert Park was his place. And it was kind of like, again, during the pandemic, a bit of an escape for him, too. And and the pictures are gorgeous as well. Sean Cahill as well took a load of the pictures. Yeah, they're and you've got brilliant. each kind of celebrity in their area which is really nice. There's some gorgeous pictures yeah, from it. Yeah, that's beautiful. There was an interesting thing in this as well that I found, because it is all over, you know, Ireland yeah. and places like that. And there are some very interesting places. But Dee O'Kane, Deirdre O'Kane, <laughs> She was quite coy about it. Yeah, she. a lot of people want to share their places. They want everyone else to know about them so people can visit. But Deirdre's like, didn't want to tell me exactly where, but it's in Dunleary. She found this perch behind a wall through a housing estate during the pandemic where she would sit and just look out at the sea. And you could only fit kind of two people there and she'd go with her coffee. She would meditate. She would get herself very calm. And yeah, we don't know exactly where it is, but it's there. You probably can figure it out if you if you know Dunleary. That's interesting <laughs> because I remember she took pictures all the time yeah. from this. Face. I was like, I wonder where she is. Yeah, well, I know you it? might you might get more of an idea when you but read the book. She's keeping it a little bit. Yeah, I yeah. think that's great. Yeah, yeah. You've got to keep something. Where's like your favourite place? Well, my place is a place called Roundwood House in County Leash, not Dublin. You'd be glad to hear, even though I do love Dublin. <laughs> Anywhere but, um, but Dublin. This it's, fellow, it's, 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 it's a country a home that I've been going to, like. Uh, with my kids since they were very small. They've kind of, they've got kids the same age, the people who run the house, Paddy and Hannah. So Roundwood House is my perfect place. And I just play Scrabble, I drink coffee, I eat flapjacks, I just feel very relaxed. and feel like I live in a very posh house. Just <laughs> like of the you manor. Can that out, can you? At the can time. you rent yeah. that house out? Oh, well, no, just I, you know, stay, there. stay there for a night. Like, it's like a, wow. a bed and breakfast hotel. Kind of That's place. amazing, doesn't it? Yeah, it's nice told everyone. Well done. Yeah, no, I want everyone to know about Randwood House County Leash. They'll love me now. And was there anywhere in this <laughs> that you were surprised about? Yeah, I mean, Marguerite Penrose, she's an activist, she's a writer. You might have had her on, actually, in yeah. a memoir recently. She chose the casino in Marino, another Dublin one. But this is this beautiful miniature architectural gem just in two, two miles miles from it's Dublin city and I, loads of people don't know about it but it's an incredible place it's apparently the best example of that kind of architecture architecture outside of Rome and she wants everyone to go there so that's why it's, she chose it it's very very cool that yeah. place because it does it's feel like kind of hidden it looks tiny on the yeah. outside and it's 16 rooms inside it's and you're kind cool. of like what how is this here it's so weird where's your do you have a favorite place in Ireland that you like to go to Golf course, any old golf no, course. No, I gotta say, Emmy Lake and Emmy Vale Monaghan. Oh, it's where lovely. we always go for a swim at Christmas Gorgeous. time. That's really yes, it's that kind of thing. It's there a family thing. Like Orla Kylie talked about Loch Dan in Wicklow. Every Christmas when she comes home from London, they go down there for this beautiful downhill walk towards Loch Dan and all these gorgeous places. It's your first, your favourite? Uh, oh, Cara Darian. Cara Daniel, and again, that's where my And I was from. asking Angela earlier, and she said um, Trebolgan in Cork. Do you remember it was kids? Trebolgan. <laughs> Oh my God, the it's wave like machine. <laughs> and then, oh, be careful. If you wee in the pool, there'll be a red ring yeah. around you. Do you oh, remember I'm that? sure I had that red oh, ring memories following me. Were in the memories. memories. How did they get kids to believe that? It was so amazing. What, that's not true? <laughs> <laughs> and I, look at I, I don't want to mention the C word quite yet, but Christmas. It's a great Christmas present because it's a coffee table book. And for people who aren't in Ireland, just reminding them of all the beautiful places. I can see this at but my also, parents' house at Christmas. Oh, yeah, yeah, places absolutely. that you want to go as well. Maybe it's you lovely. might want to discover people that you love. As always, Roisin Ingle, an absolute Thank you pleasure so much. to have you. And congratulations <laughs> on the book, very by much. the way. My perfect place in Ireland. Love it. <laughs> That's it. And remember, if you are an eager reader or you love reading, you can catch all the latest bestsellers and what's going on with them on What's the Story with East. And it's available this Sunday on Virgin Media 3. Now, still to come, we're going to be reviewing this week's cinema releases, such as The Banshees of Inish Year, and can't wait for that, and yeah. Black Adam. And we'll be finding out what thrill seekers can expect at Castle Comer's Discovery Park. Someday, maybe it'll be in the book. Maybe, we'll maybe to it's shortly. already there. <laughs> Hello, oh, you're very welcome back to another busy old hour still to come here on Ireland AM. Now, one movie is tipped for Oscar glory, whilst the other might suit the board at the good old Razzies. We're reviewing this weekend's new cinema releases. Yeah, look forward to that. I can't wait for that. Banshee's been sharing. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, this morning, Alan is going to he's taking a trip around Kilkenny from the historical sites to an exciting range of activities. <laughs> That's a bit I want to see at Castlecomer Discovery Park. He's also taken Edward Hayden with yeah. him, lads, and I swear to God, the man... <laughs> There's Edward there, though. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot I wait, wait to watch that. Uh, Derek is in Sligo all morning and he hasn't gotten a, an ounce of water and rain on his head today. How are we looking weather-wise, Derek? 
No, thank God, Worm, because we've had so much rain over the last few days. But we're here at the Cancer Support Centre here in Sligo. Of course, they provide counselling, uh, psychotherapy, uh, healing therapies and workshops as well. We're going to be catching up with some of the team here on the ground. But you know what we were actually talking about before we came on air? We were talking about Halloween costumes. Nula, what are you going to wear, dress up for uh, oh, Halloween? I'm not sure. Maybe a surgeon. Maybe a surgeon. <laughs> and look, Bridget's already got her Halloween frog on. <laughs> Dress for the occasion. <laughs> we'll catch you later on. <laughs> she's wearing, oh, she delighted she's with wearing a lovely dress for her time on TV, there. <laughs> we can't say oh, that. Very, very welcome back. We have a lot of texts coming in. Mm -hmm. Huge amount of texts coming in, particularly around this um, the streets. This is particularly around Dublin, but it's actually all over Everywhere. the country. Yeah. And Michal Martin talked about setting up a task force to try and clean up the likes of O'Connell Street. And we're seeing the amount of homeless, people, poor people who are in a really bad way with drugs yeah. and everything else. And it is about, like, it, it's it, it's about how we can prevent this, how we can help people's lives is what we'd like. But it is... Well, that's what he's wanting to do, an, absolutely. An, yeah. an awful lot of times this is focused on Dublin. It's certainly not just Dublin. Chris, um, it's the same in Galway. You can't walk through Air Square or Shop Street without seeing people begging. It's terribly sad. Assaults are now also becoming a daily thing and there's not a Garda in sight. Mm. And having lived in Galway for college, like... The friendliest, happiest place I've ever been, bar, you know, night time, it would be a bit dodgy. It's yeah, well, I would nice love stuff. Galway. It's a great night out, of course, as well. But yeah, I mean, even Deborah here is talking about in Henry Street in Dublin. She said she's a hairdresser there. Since COVID, it's become a no-go area. There are gangs fighting openly on the street during the day. It's absolutely shocking. I was talking to, I was shopping last week and I was talking to a worker who works in a shop on the south side of Dublin City. And he was saying that last week, you know, they were going about their day and uh, two lads ran into the shop and they were trying to stab each other. They were just at work People, doing oh, their job oh. and they were like, I was like, did a guard arrive? They were like, we just had our security. We were all just kind of standing back and then a few of us kind of went up to them to kind of usher them out. But openly using drugs. And listen, you can't harm the guards in this. The guards, there's not enough of them on the streets. You need guards out there on yeah. the streets. I just have to read this. Orla said, as sad as it is, I was raised near the city centre. I knew it so well. I'll be 60 next year. But today I have to say I no longer have any interest in Dublin City. It's not Moore Street, Henry Street or Grafton Street. Street like I knew it. I'm now in a very quiet spot in lovely leash and I love it. So good on you. There you go, Orla. Uh, thank you so much for those text messages. Now, after the break, we're going to be paying a visit to Kilkenny and Edward Hayden and Alan Hughes are going to make you laugh. We'll see you back here in a few minutes. Welcome back. That was very long. Oh. Um, but now, recently, our lovely Alan took a trip to the medieval city of Kilkenny. And while he was in the county, he found his inner Tarzan. Oh, yes, he did. Full leotard and everything. <laughs> swinging from Don't the treetops and got a person, up close a person with a lizard. Yeah, he also tried to play hurling, apparently. It's the perfect spot to keep discovering this autumn. Take a look. We're in the county where they say you're born with a hurley in your hand. But there's so much more to see and do in the city of Kilkenny that doesn't involve a hurley or a slither. And I'm about to show you some of them today. Are you ready? So if you want it, tell me the truth. Midterm break is just around the corner, so why not take a break and explore this medieval city? Thanks to Falcha Ireland's Keep Discovering campaign, I'm about to show you some of the top spots. Time now for a history lesson, but not the type you might expect. I'm off to meet a man who runs Shenanigans Walks, a misguided tour. Nevin, thanks so much for chatting to us. Shenanigans Walks, you're the most famous man in Kilkenny. Hey, I wish I was, I wish I was, but welcome, welcome. Yeah, Shenanigans Walks, and, and we're only a couple of years in business now, but we've really been punching above our weight. So but we... you have, because you've been winning some amazing accolades. Yeah, um, well, last year, I suppose, it really kicked off for us. We won the TripAdvisor Travel Choice Award as the best thing to do in all of Ireland, actually in the top 1% worldwide. We, we have our history, and we, we bring people around this amazing city that we have here in Medieval City, but we add a bit of humour into it. We add some magic effects into it as well as we go around. What kind of magic? Well, we read people's minds. We make a bottle of beer disappear. <laughs> Not the way you'd like to maybe do it. <laughs> uh, when we're outside talking about Smittix. And there's so many great stories associated with this castle. It's been here, you know, since the, the, the late 1100s and we're really lucky to have it here. But I think an interesting fact that often gets a laugh on the tour is we talk about the, the moat and how they used to have the outlets to the toilet in the moat to try and spread some disease. And actually the first properly plumbed toilet in Ireland was put into the 
Castle in 1904 for Edward VII's visit. And all I say to people when they do the tour, he must have been a big guy because that's a very big title. Is it a very big title? <laughs> very big title. Now we hear when we're in Kilkenny at the Kilkenny Cats, yeah. and you have some very interesting stories of where that whole name came from. There's a cave a few miles from town called Dunmore Cave, and I said that there was a prehistoric cat there that used to eat children. <gasps> but that's of course parents trying to scare the kids from going in. <laughs> I mean, it sounds all quite dark now, this misguided <laughs> tour, but who is it aimed at? I suppose it's aimed at families and everybody as from well. From nine yeah. to 90, you know, we, it's for all the family, and that's the way I designed it. In fact, because there is a little bit of history in there, we've decided that children under 12 go free on the tour. And I believe on your tour, there's a bit of a chant that you have to do. Yeah, well, you're part of our tribe. I want to You're be part, part of our of tribe, tribe, so we do the shenanigans roar. So okay, let's, do, let's do it, yeah. Okay, so Alan, left foot forward. Left foot forward. Well done, 50-50 oh, chance there. Oh, there you there. go. Good there was a, yeah. Yeah. Was I get right or left, yeah. yeah. I get your two hands in the air like this, yeah. and on the count of three, you're going to shout shenanigans. Ready? One, two, three. Shenanigans! Well, there are some things that you didn't know about Kilkenny. I'm off now to visit some cold-blooded creatures at Ireland's only reptile zoo. So James, Ireland's only reptile zoo, how did this all begin? Yeah, so I'm a zoologist, so I would have done a lot of work in the field and I was doing a lot of research and then I started bringing the research home with me and we started trying to learn a little bit more about these guys. Home to your house? To the house, yeah, back to Ireland, into the house. So I was trying to, trying to learn more about these guys because it's quite hard to find out about them in the field when you're trying to do, when you're trying to save some of these species are quite endangered. We have over 180 at the moment. And including, I, I just spotted some, are they alligators or are they Yeah, we've got they a two, alligators. two American alligators. Yeah. How did you get them here? So they came to us about 12 or 14 years ago. So these guys were born in captivity and uh, yeah, they came in big wooden crates. And I mean, we have this little fella here. Tell us about who's this or what uh, is This it? is Rafiki. Rafiki, hi Rafiki's Rafiki. Rafiki's a royal python and he's from Africa. Okay. And this is one of our guys that we would take out for the public. Rafiki isn't dangerous, but you have some dangerous poisonous snakes here yeah. and, animal, and reptiles. We've got things like mambas, cobras. Um, we have like how snakes. dangerous are we talking about? Dangerous enough to, to, to finish you off. Yeah. And is, is it true that then you have to come in and check that they are here every morning safety wise? Well, absolutely. Yeah, the staff in the mornings will do a safety check first thing in the morning and a safety check before we lock up at night. You have something else in store for me? Yeah, we've got a bigger guy. A bigger, a bigger snake? A tigu, a lizard. A lizard? <laughs> we can go to snake after that if you want. No, let's, let's, <laughs> let's go. What, what's, what's it called? We have tigu. Tigu, okay. Let's go and meet Tigu. Perfect. So this is an Argentinian Tigu. A Tigu? Yeah. What's a, a t what is a Tigu? A, a Tigu, it's a type of lizard. Well, and um, he's a nice big lizard as well. What's he doing with his tongue? So that's his way of smelling things. So it's like a dog's wet nose. He puts his tongue out, picks up the scent, puts it back in and processes the same way we process smell. Okay, it's not going to bite. It doesn't bite. He's anything. pretty chilled out. He's very used to people, this guy. I'll hold him. Yeah, so we're holding him. See where my hands are? Yeah. So we'll make sure his front legs are supported. Yeah, well, and his back legs are supported. I can oh, hold him with you if he's a bit him. awkward. That's oh. it, you got him. Oh. <laughs> okay, no. Why is he, why is he doing that? He's just turned himself around. Oh, so God. be open your hand. What? <laughs> All good. <laughs> so he just wants, he's, the bigger your hand, you can make okay. your hand. Perfect. Exactly. All right, there and we the go, the same with the back. Shoot Excellent. the baby. There's a nice baby. There you go, baby. <laughs> Alan, they said, you're going to spend a lovely afternoon in the Kilkenny countryside. What they didn't say, it's on Ireland's longest zip line at the Castle Comer Discovery Park. Oh, wish me luck. <laughs> now you can't come to Kilkenny without drafting in one of Kilkenny's favorite sons, Edward Hayden. How are you, Edward? Do you know what I have to say? You're a huge ambassador for Kilkenny. Well, I try my best, Alan, but it's very easy because uh, without sounding biased, which I know I'm going to, <laughs> everything that we have is very good. We've got a most beautiful city and county, so it's very easy to offer the Cade Meal of Alton. Now, you may realise we are in a discovery park, so I have a few little surprises for you. How do I get myself into <laughs> these situations? Just how? <laughs> So Cathy, tell us about the Discovery Park. Well, welcome to the, one of the best adventure parks in the whole of Ireland. We have something for every age here. We opened in 2007, so a lot of people don't know, but we're a not-for-profit social enterprise. Okay. We have 
uh, low ropes courses. We have Ireland's longest zip wire. I know I've experienced that yes, already. Yes, you have. <laughs> we have an octagon high ropes course. We have archery, axe throwing, kayaking, pedal boats, and our coal mining museum, which is absolutely so brilliant and interesting. For people who want to find out more about the park and about what we're doing for midterm, go on to discoverypark.ie and all the information is there. I'm sure it's going to be a great day out like we're having at the moment and we're all geared up and safety very important here obviously. Oh yes, yes. And uh, I've drafted in our very own Edward to start your challenge. Are you ready? Thanks Cathy. Good luck guys! <laughs> Come on, Edward, I'll give you a race. You will. <laughs> will you shut up and leave me alone in the name of God? Oh, my God. Don't look down. I'm much better at the buns. I was just going to say, like a child on a car journey, are we there yet? <laughs> the are you all right? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Go nowhere. <laughs> like life, we're going round in circles. <laughs> this could take a while, but I tell you, we've had a great day here in Kilkenny. There's so much to see and do, and make sure you keep discovering. Come on, left, okay. left, turn, left, turn, 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 you're going to miss it. You're going Ah, two best buddies. Can someone get a tattoo? I'm much better at the buns. Can we get him a t-shirt of that? Edward Hayden. Mwah. It's very Love it. fetching about that. It is. There. There's some great places in Kilkenny for family and children for the midterm break and coming months. Yeah, get out and discover with Falch Ireland for more. Check out Discover Ireland. .ie. We have a few more suggestions. Yes, we do. The places Derek has definitely been to. The Beyond the Trees in County Wicklow. Yes, so he was there when that opened, wasn't it? It was yeah. in Avoca. It's the treetop walk that's a, that's a kilometre and a half, I think. And it's like, uh, I think the viewing tower is like 38 metres yes. high. Yes, remember he was I running, know. he ran back up to do his weather report the day that he was there. Yeah, good luck, get me up there. Um, or Zip It in Dublin as well, in Rathfarnham in Dublin. Have you been to that? Look at that, and mind you, to be fair, that's unbelievable, that one. It's very cool. Um, have you done the Zip It thing? Have no, you done zip lining? No, well, I've done zip lining before. Yeah, there you go. Do you always feel like you're in Home Alone when you do it? Climb it, swing it, surf it, zip it. <laughs> and how about in Galway, Wildlands with everything from archery. Love a bit. Of, it always reminds me of a school tour. Bushcraft. There you what's, go. What's bushcraft? I don't know. What Fairy that is. trails and much, much more. Loads that you can do with the kids. So why not? Get Fantastic. out there, get exploring. Still to come this morning, it's the film critics have been raving about. Oh, I can't wait to talk about it. Yes, we're going to be reviewing The Banshees of Inishir, starring Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson. And it's out tomorrow, I think, isn't it? Our name is back in a few minutes. Welcome back. We know we were talking about uh, streets and people feeling safe or unsafe, and a message from Adam who says, I walk home most nights from Dublin city centre because of the shortage of taxis and I never have any issues. I've never felt unsafe. It goes without saying that people should have their wits about them. There's always going to be an element of danger anywhere you go. There's now to strangest folk. So you feel very safe, but obviously there's loads of danger going on around you. Didn't that, did that read? Welcome that back that? to Balls Bridge there. Stop at you Very now. Messing. Stop at Only you messing. now. No. Hi, Adam. Uh, Rose has that. actually said Dublin city centre is an awful place for tourists to come to. God love the guards having to deal with the trouble around the streets. So much loitering, drug use, and dirt. So dirty. But it's, and I know we keep on going, oh, the poor tourists. We live here all of the I time. Know. It would be like everywhere, you know, Limerick, Cork, Galway, Killarney, uh, Donegal, wherever we are, it would be nice for us to feel safe and that the place was nice. Anyway, thank you very much for getting in contact. I'm sure it's going to rumble on and they're chatting about it at the doll. We're going to go because Derek has been live all morning. What's happening your end, Derek? Thank you very much, team. Well, we're here broadcasting from the Sligo Cancer Support Centre in the northwest this morning. And joining us now, uh, Bridget Kerrigan, we've got Sean Martin and Nuala Darty. Let's you got the fire on. You've got the tea going. <laughs> and that's normal for us here, Derek, in Sligo Cancer Support Centre. So you're very welcome. Thank you very much. Anyway, Bridget, tell us about the centre here. The centre was originally formed here in this building in 1999. It officially started in 96, but we opened the centre in 1999. Um, and we provide a host of services to cancer patients and their families in the Northwest. Um, and it ranges from counselling, 
um, bioenergy healing, um, healing touch. We have lymphedema therapist. We have um, mastectomy services. And I suppose as a result of the dreaded word COVID, we also have a lot of online supports, which is new for us and which is working very well. And actually coming up to the 1st of November, it'll be our first year of running a bus in conjunction with CLASP from Sligo to Dublin on a Monday and a Friday to bring cancer patients to St. Luke's for their radium and then bringing them home again on Friday. So that was a big, a big thing for us as well. So we're blessed. We see on average around 300 new clients per year, but the amount of people that we would facilitate during the year would be much larger than that. Um, we also go up onto Northwest Hospice and provide Nula provide some bioenergy there to the, the patients and support to the families. And we also go up onto the oncology ward in Sligo General Hospital here. And we also um, provide supports to patients in Letterkenny oncology wards as now, well. Now, Sean, tell us about your journey. Four years almost to the day since your diagnosis. That's right, Derek. Yeah, October 2018. And uh, that was a quick surprise and shock, I suppose, for me. Uh, life presents these uh, changes that uh, you don't expect. And it came quite suddenly uh, in terms of diagnosis, but picked up quickly, uh, moved on to uh, treatment in uh, Galway in uh, December. And that ran through until uh, the end of February. And it was a lump in your neck, wasn't it? It was how I know, knew, actually, it was a lump at the side of my neck. Uh, I had uh, cancer at the base of my tongue, but I didn't know it. I didn't, wasn't aware of it, didn't even know it was there. There was a little tumour at the back of my tongue. And, um, but the appearance was on my neck. And I thought I had a swollen gland or something. Went to the doctor, the GP. She looked at it and, and uh, wasn't happy at all. Uh, got me straight to the ENT consultant who did uh, an examination. And uh, yeah, he went down and checked. Uh, confirmed his, his suspicions and had me teed up for uh, treatment in Galway. And you got the all clear from Galway and then you come out here for your post treatment? Well, uh, yeah, the, the treatment was focused in Galway and a radiation treatment for this particular uh, form of cancer and uh, very precise and very focused and uh, draining of your energy. Uh, uh, you know, you, you, you come from that intense period to a period of recovery. And that period then is facilitated uh, marvellously and, and professionally by the centre here. And that's the course where you come in, Nuala, because you are a bioenergy therapist. What does your work involve? Um, basically, the thinking, Derek, is um, the, the prevailing paradigm would be that the body is chemical and mechanical. But we, the, the new paradigm that's been coming for a long number of years, we're also made of energy. So the bioenergy would work on the actual energy field on the body that surrounds the body. It can move several feet from the actual physical body outward. And we work to bring balance and harmony and cohesion back to the energy field again. The effects of it, um, and I think maybe Shane would, would agree with this, is people come having had the diagnosis very traumatised, a lot of fear, anxiety, the body's tense, and this treatment just literally begins amazingly to relax the body. Yes. Uh, the mood can often be altered, uh, pain often can, uh, can be eased. So there are great benefits, uh, and sometimes people would describe it as a, a lovely sense of well-being again, or peace and calm. Within Absolutely. the body itself, uh, I, I, I give the thumbs up to that. Thumbs up to that. Absolutely. As being, uh, as being the, re the recipient of it, yeah. uh, I think that the the, the exchange and the is a, and it's, it's you are uh, you know you have had a trauma in your life. Yes. Uh, it's been it's a surprise. It comes unexpected, and there's a great gentleness actually in in this relationship as well between. Uh, myself and, and Nula and uh, I'm sure with others as well in terms of the process. Uh, uh, that's what I said, it's a healing process. And it's, it? uh, it's, uh, yeah, we, the body will look after itself in terms of its, of its healing um, and, and uh, will work that energy. It's the energy and, 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 and calmness and putting you in a place. Yes. Uh, and that's a guided journey. And Nula is, is you're, you're in expert hands 
in that experience, I have to say. And Bridget, if people want to find out more online, where can they find you? I know you're doing a lot of fundraising at the moment. We're doing a lot of fundraising at the moment. Well, not us personally, the community of Sligo in the North West is so, so good to us, Derek. We couldn't do what we do without the fundraising. Obviously, we get some funding from the HSE, yeah. the NCCP, the ICS and Shout, which is the Sligo Hospital Oncology Unit Trust but Sligo Cancer Support Centre .ie, right. and you'll get all the information. And our own Joe Shannon attends here as well. We're blessed. Joe Shannon is yeah. here and we wish him very, we very all well. the Andy's best. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Bridget, Sean and Ula, thank you so much for joining us here this morning. Really enjoyed your company. There's great calmness here in the room this morning, isn't it? Oh, we're very zen like We're very zen. <laughs> we'll enjoy our cup of coffee. Back to base. Thank you so much, Derek. Lots more still to come on Ireland AM. We'll be back in a minute. movie time with Brian Lloyd from entertainment.ie Brian it is lovely to have you here we've been building up to the Banshees of Inna yeah. all morning what's it about? So uh, it's about two people living on the island of Inna uh, one is a musician played by Brendan Gleeson the other is a farmer played by Colin Farrell one day Brendan Gleeson's character decides that he just doesn't want to be friends with Colin Farrell anymore Colin Farrell can't really kind of grasp that and then Brendan Gleeson's character decides that for every time Colin Farrell annoys him, he's going to cut off one finger of his hand until Ooh. he's removed all fingers from his My hand. Goodness. Let's take a look at not the finger chopping off bit. Here is the Banshee's of Inna Sheeran. <laughs> how do? How do, Parik? Sit somewhere else. Huh? Uh, but I have my pint there, Colin. He has his pint there, Colin, from when he came in and ordered his pint before. No? OK. I'll sit somewhere else, so. Are you rowing? I didn't think we were rowing. Well, you are rowing. Well, you are rowing. He's sitting outside in his own like a watch him call. It does look like we're rowing. Now, in that clip, uh, we see Dumbelievables back yeah. together, which is John Kenny and Pat Short, which yeah. is absolutely lovely. Um, not the crack, though, that we're not used to seeing with them. Well, you see, my, it's like a John B. Keane play. Do you know? Yes. Is that, is that what's going That's on here? That's exactly what it's like, yeah. It is a very, like... It's funny, but it is kind of morose in its funniness. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's very, very bleak. I mean, it's set during the Irish Civil War. Okay. Now, you don't actually see a lot of violence in it necessarily, but there is a kind of like just really like creeping tension in it. And the fact that like Brendan Gleeson's character is so kind of grim and he's, he like he talks about his despair a little bit and as well. Like it's a very, very black comedy. But in saying that, there are parts of it that are absolutely hilarious. And then there are parts of it that are kind of almost heartbreaking in a weird kind of way. Like, I mean, there's one scene in that, I don't want to get into it, but it involves a donkey, and it's just, it will floor you. Um, um, what, it, like, cos I just put those two together from In Bruges. Yeah. And it was hilarious. Yeah. Brilliant movie. Yeah. But this is a bit different, obviously. It's I'm not guessing. as funny as In Bruges. It's okay. not as funny. When it is funny, it's a completely different kind of funny. Because In Bruges was like, oh, God, I can't believe what they're saying. Yeah. You know, that sort of way. Like, where they're okay. running around with the yeah. American tourists and stuff. You're like, I can't believe they're saying that. In this, it's a bit more sort of like... It, it's almost... Like, it's uh, trying to get funny out of tension, you know, that sort of way. Like It's, it's an element of of, Mar of McDonough's plays. Like, yes. when you go to the Lieutenant of Vintage Man and all that yeah, kind of yeah. stuff, it, it, it's kind of bringing that into the film world. Yeah. Um, but in saying that, there's obviously there's huge Oscar buzz about all mm. this. The, we had Derek was talking to the two lads on the red carpet and they're yeah. like, it's male friendship and how we don't communicate with each other mm. and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, right. Is there an element of Irishness? about yeah. this with a capital O. Yeah, I know, yeah. It's it's a, it's a strange one because, like, you know, European and American critics are read, are watching this and re writing these great reviews and saying, oh, it's fantastic. But I noticed myself when I was watching it, there's almost an element of, like, are you kind of taking the mick here? Is there an right. element of, like, diddly eye here? Is there something? I don't know. I haven't really figured it out. But in saying that, I mean, some of the phrases that are used, like I've heard my granddad using it, like, you know, that kind of... Love so it does, have an air, it does have an air of authenticity. And it's like, taken it back, you know, yeah, years it's ago. The, and yeah. it's, when, it's in the, on island in a year. And I mean, and Brendan Gleeson, like, personally, he could do, he can do all the diddly I he wants. I think I he's care. amazing. Yeah. 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 And, and this like, is it. And and like, he, it is that good. Like, it is good, because they got that huge standing ovation. Yeah, yeah, in Venice, yeah, like, 15 minutes, like... 
And like, I would not be surprised in the slightest if Brendan Gleeson gets an Oscar nomination for this. Like, he was that good. And Kerry Condon as what well. Colin Condon. Farrell, no? Colin Farrell is really, really good in it, but he, it's whenever Brendan Gleeson is on, he just has more screen presence. And that's kind of the point, because... It's he is the bigger character. Exactly. In it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's and that's why they play so well off each other. Exactly. And it isn't about Colin. It is about so, which I love that. And even in their interview, God, they're so good. They're, oh, they're so together. good oh, together. Right. Yeah. Um, and are we just the, going back to these standing ovations for one minute? Because there was yeah. another one of the Irish premier as well for fifteen minutes. Wouldn't you be mortified? Like if you're standing there, with Colin Farrell, you're like, lads, all right, come all right, on thanks. Now. Did you like that? Thanks. People. Thanks. Can I sit down? Can I sit down? Okay. Right, so come that's, on. Star rating. What do you reckon? Four out of five. Oh like it's weird. no, it's definitely worth a watch, but okay. just don't go into it thinking it's going to be like in Bruges. Uh, okay, okay. Right. can we now talk about Black Adam? This is the new DC superhero movie, <laughs> and everyone's going, "What's Black Adam?" I've never read that comic. What's it about? So Dwayne Johnson plays this, um, I guess you would say, like a slave, really, uh, from five thousand years ago, who gets imbued with this superpower, but then is locked in a tomb for five thousand years. Of course, is woken up, doesn't mm -hmm. realize what's going on, but then goes on this big mad rampage. These superheroes from America, okay. called the Justice Society of America, that's how subtle we're going here. One of them was called Hawkman because he flies around the place. Pierce Brosnan plays this guy called Dr. Fate, oh. who can see into the future. There's... Um, Do you know what? We have a clip of it. I yeah, want just, to see the just, clip. Just on, the let's clip. have a look at yeah, the clip. Subtle. Have yeah. a little look at the clip. This loose cannon needs to be locked down before innocent people start getting hurt. He's been asleep for 5,000 years. Find us a cell that can hold them. We'll take care of the rest. Who's on the team? I didn't bring a passport. We don't need passports. We're the Justice Society. There's a war going on outside. We ain't safe from Black Adam. We're here to negotiate your peaceful surrender. Heard about at least three killings this afternoon. I'm not peaceful. Nor do I surrender. Here we go. I kind of think The Rock has been waiting to get into be a yeah. superhero, hasn't he? He has, but the problem with this is, is that it's so bland. Like, it's just, <laughs> you've seen this been done before. Like, I mean, these kind of like superhero origin, it's like, oh, he's an anti-hero, oh, he kills people. But like, it's again, that's all been done before and done better. And like, Dwayne Johnson, like, I'm sorry, like, but he can't play this kind of anti-hero character because he's too nice. Yeah. Yes. You're watching him and it's like, it's Dwayne Johnson being a baddie, but he's not really... He's going around high-fiving everybody off. Yeah, he's yeah. just, you're expecting him to kind of, like, do the eyebrow thing and, you know, like, yeah. talk about his, you know, clothing <laughs> brand or something like that. And, like, you know, he has been pushing for this for years. Yes. Like, he's been trying to get this going and it didn't happen and all the rest of it. And it feels like if this had happened five, maybe ten years ago, it would have blown up. But now okay. that we've kind of moved on and kind of superhero films are kind of, they are beginning to peter They're starting out a to over bit. like the last Batman with Robert Pattinson. Brilliant, so dark, love it. Yeah, but that was so that. different from yeah. everything you'd seen before. No superhero but movie. the superhero Marvel DC, I'm getting a bit. I'm it's it's a bit fed up. Yeah. Pierce Brosnan though. Yeah, he's the best thing about it. No. The best thing about it, yeah. But so I, Colin Farrell, Brendan Gleeson and, and Pierce and Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan. Yeah. in the box office. Have you got stars? Two out of five. There we go. Sounds enough. Pick Banshees of Inishir uh, from entertainment.ie. Brian Lloyd, as always, thank you so much. Great we appreciate it. Now, coming up on tomorrow's show, Dancing with the Stars professional John Nolan and Ultimate Hell Week's Luke Thomas will be stopping by to tell us why they're joining the forces. Joining forces, not the forces. No, oh, they're joining the forces. Yeah, that's it. Hell Week. <laughs> they're the going for it. Break with advice on keeping your children. <laughs> Occupied. Uh, and there's also pumpkin beans of bread on the menu. And we're going to be answering the questions about your winter fashion dilemmas. Any Joining NATO, fashion? they're going to the front line. All that Joining was the force the looks more interesting, <laughs> wouldn't it? Weather you're waking up to. <laughs> Ireland AM is live tomorrow Good. from Join 7 with people joining the army, it would appear. We'll talk to you again next week. Bye. See you Monday.